Hello beauties, welcome and thank you for joining me. Today's video we're going to be discussing my ultimate brush guide for beginners. And in today's video we're going to be going over 10 face brushes and a sponge. <laughs> 10 face brushes and a sponge that will kind of guide you and figure out what brushes are best for you and more than that, how to properly use them. A few are foundation, a few are concealer, a few are blush, bronze, or highlight powder. So I kind of walk you guys through the steps that I take to create a flawless face, the differences between each brush, and how to properly apply them. So if that's something you're interested in, just keep watching. For those of you that are new, welcome. My name is Mona, and on my channel, we talk about beauty, fashion, lifestyle, bridal, anything, you name it. So before we get into each brush specifically and what technique it's used for, I want to give you guys just kind of an overall understanding of how makeup brushes work all across the board. So if you have a brush like this that is more dense, you can see the bristles are more dense, it's not as fluffy, and moving them around is not as easy. A brush like this that has more density is going to give you heavier coverage. On the contrary, if you have a brush like this that's a little more fluffy, that is easily flexible, this kind of brush gives you less coverage and it applies in a softer way, if that makes sense. So you really wanna understand this rule of thumb. The denser the brush, the heavier the coverage. The more flexible and less dense the brush, the softer, less coverage. So now that we have that out of the way, let's get into face brushes. So a lot of you I'm sure have seen your flat foundation brush. When it comes to a flat foundation brush, it is a super light coverage, great for easy application, plus it really helps you get into any nooks and crannies that you may have, either around your nose, under your chin. This is just really great for application. I personally don't think it gives the best flawless finish when it comes to foundation, and the reason I say that is because it takes too long to apply and I don't believe it buffs out the best. But Beautiful for application if you are going in with a second technique to buff and finish out your foundation. The next kind of brush you have is a dual fiber stippling brush. A brush like this that has dual fibers is going to give you a really light coverage. As you can see, the bristles are super flexible, really work into the skin. And the way you wanna use this brush, you don't want to buff in circles around your face. You want to stipple and press this foundation on your face using the brush. The stippling motions give you a really flawless coverage, pressing the foundation into your skin, leaving it super flawless and very skin-like. A dual fiber brush gives the appearance of natural skin along with packing on product without it getting too heavy. It also helps blend and buff into the skin beautifully. My personal favorite kind of brush to use when it comes to foundation is a dense round brush. Something like this, a fluffy round brush that has a little more density, really buffs product into a circular motion into the face. In circular motions, this allows you to buff the product into the skin, but leaving your skin with a beautiful skin-like finish rather than a coating of foundation. What's also really nice is this gives great coverage and you can press product and build product with a brush like this, leaving your skin looking super flawless and airbrushed at the end. And lastly, the most commonly used, probably the easiest to use and foolproof way of using a foundation would be with a wet or damp sponge. A wet or damp sponge allows you to press product into the face without leaving extra product on the face. So I like to go in with a sponge either to pick up any excess product that I might have on my skin, as you can see here. The great thing about sponges is they are buildable. So if you wanna go in with more product and press more product on the skin, you can. This also allows for you to get a flawless full coverage without any product being sitting on your skin because the damp sponge picks up any excess. Next comes concealer. This is probably the most controversial way of applying concealer and the reason I say that is because you have a lot of different brushes, a lot of different techniques and not everyone really understands how to properly use a concealer brush so that's why I'm here to guide you. When it comes to concealer, you have an option of three different types of brushes. This goes right back to us talking about density, right? So this brush has a medium density. This one's flexible, but it's still dense enough that I can buff and use and it'll still give me the coverage. This brush, for example, is extremely, extremely dense. It doesn't give a lot of movement and this is going to help pack, press, and really, really press on products, giving you a full coverage. Then you have your sponge. 
First, I'm going to show you guys how to use the medium coverage buffing brush. As you can see here, I like to use this brush in circular motions, really giving me a light to medium coverage, and it helps buff and even out underneath my eyes. It gives a good coverage, but it's not the fullest of coverage. For those who don't have really heavy, dark under eye circles, or those who don't have a lot of coverage necessary, or if you just want a lighter coverage for the day, a brush like this is great for concealer. For those like myself who enjoy heavier coverage underneath the eyes, especially for a night out or an event, the dense, brush is definitely best. I love this brush when it comes to packing on concealer. You can see the difference between both eyes when I'm finished. This helps me really get underneath the eye and press the product underneath and really help create a full coverage without it looking too heavy. I also love this brush because it gives a really dense coverage of concealer without it looking cakey or heavy. Lastly, when it comes to concealer, I always like to go back in with my damp sponge. You can use this directly as a concealer base. You can use this to blend out your concealer. A sponge is going to do the same thing it did for your foundation when it comes to your concealer. It'll pick up any excess product. It'll leave your under eyes looking super flawless, or you can use it directly on concealer to really create an even under eye without the product looking too heavy or too cakey. Next comes powder. When it comes to applying a powder, I never recommend applying a powder very densely. You have two different options. When it comes to setting my under eyes, I either like to go in with a sponge, and you guys can see here, I like to dip my sponge, damp sponge, always make sure it's wet, into the translucent powder and then press, press, press underneath the eyes. Another way of applying translucent powder underneath the eyes is using a brush like this. What this is going to do is it's going to give you a really soft coverage underneath the eyes with the translucent powder and really help you get in and underneath those nooks and crannies and really help set the eyes. Either technique is really great. I don't bake, but you can bake. You can also use a damp sponge to bake and leave excess product underneath the eyes to really help brighten and leave them there while you finish up your makeup. So that goes for setting your under eyes. When it comes to setting your face, you wanna use a brush like this, and because it's fluffy, what I like to do is I'll press it into the powder that I wanna use all over my face, and you want to press the translucent powder or the colored powder or whatever you're using to set on your face. You never wanna buff until after your whole face is set. The reason I say that is because when you use a fluffy brush like this, what you're doing is you're actually pressing into the skin but with a very light coverage, right? So you're absorbing that moisture. Then once all of that moisture is absorbed, you can then go back in and buff, and buff into circular motion. Next, what I like to go into is blush, bronzer, and highlight. So for bronzer, I've always loved using a brush like this, and a lot of you I'm sure have seen this. A fluffy angled brush is one of my personal favorites to use for bronzer. And the reason I say that is because when it's a fluffy angled brush, you can see it's not so dense. It really helps me get into my contoured areas, right underneath my cheekbones, around my jawline, and into my temples without it looking too harsh. Due to the density and the fluffiness of the brush, I'm able to buff the product and press the product into my skin without leaving any harsh lines or lines of demarcation. A brush like this can also be used for your blush, but we'll get into that. Next for blush, you can either use your angled fluffy brush again, but try and find a different one, or you can use a fluffy brush like this that's like a round tapered fluffy brush. The reason I say use a round tapered fluffy brush, you can see what I do, is with a brush like this, I start towards the temples of my cheeks, all the way at the top of my cheekbones, and with your blush, you don't want to swipe, you want to press. So using this tapered brush, you're going to press, press, press the blush and bring it from your temples down to the apples of your cheeks, and whatever is left, you can bring and buff on top. The reason I say press is because you don't want to move the products that you've built underneath the blush. So meaning your foundation, your powder, you've done all this work, you don't want to buff away everything you've already done. On the other side, you'll see I'm using the angled fluffy brush. This same technique, but because it's fluffy and less dense, I can go on top of my skin and buff into circular motions. What this is going to do is it's going to help the blush lay on top of my bronzer and on top of my foundation without moving any product, leaving my blush looking even all around. 
I also like to take whatever's left and brush it across my nose. I just love a beautiful flushed look and it just brings so much color to the face. Finally, not least, it's actually one of my personal favorite techniques, my personal favorite brushes to use, and my personal favorite finish to my makeup comes my highlight. So the only brush I ever personally use when it comes to highlight on my clients, on myself, I also find that it's the best way to apply highlight without it looking too heavy on the cheeks or without leaving any lines of demarcation. I like to use a fan brush. And what a fan brush is going to do is it's going to evenly highlight the cheeks, leaving them soft and glowy, allowing the product to kind of disperse aside from just the high points of my cheekbones. And what you can see here, is my cheeks look nice and lifted. There's a lot of light that's brought to the high points of my face when I'm applying my highlighter, but it's not just in one solid streak. It creates a really even, beautiful glow to the skin, and using a fan brush really helps you blend and buff that highlight in. To finish off my makeup just for video purposes, I'm just popping a little bit of that highlighter onto my brow bone, and I'm finishing off my lips with a lipstick and a lip liner just to kind of give my look an entire finish. So there you guys have it. I hope you enjoyed sticking through the video with me. We've gone over 10 different face brushes and I really hope that you guys now have a little bit of an understanding of the difference between each face brush and how to properly apply it more than anything. Having the brush is one thing, but knowing how to use it is another. Thank you guys so much for sticking through the video with me. If you haven't subscribed, please don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in my next video and I'm gonna leave you guys a few videos here to check out as well. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys soon.